All right, so there's this kid in our neighborhood who, he's 10 or 12, so he should know better, but he keeps breaking social distancing, just despite my uh, gross beard and my generally disagreeable attitude. But we keep telling him, like, hey, bud, you need to like, keep some social distance, because my dad's, like, he's over 60. Uh, but he keeps doing it anyway. So his uh, name and home address is... Probably shouldn't do that, but it, it did give me the idea to turn my nerve face tracking robot into a social distancing robot. But I probably still wouldn't even use that on him, but... Maybe I'll push him off his bike. I changed the turret so it can be mounted with GoPro accessories and also so that the webcam can be mounted directly to the turret. And then I added two spots for indicator lights on the barrel. Most of these internals are all identical to the face shooting robot. I used an Arduino to control the servos and the relay which shoots the solenoid and all of this is powered by a 12 volt battery. Outside of the box, we have the serial cable coming from the Arduino, along with wires to control the servos and the solenoid, and an emergency cutoff switch. The main difference with the code is that OpenCV now tracks width of faces, which it uses to estimate distance, and the Arduino uses that to decide whether or not it's going to shoot. After printing and assembly, all that was left to do was to stuff it all into a bag without it looking like a bomb, which I couldn't do. To get things running, you start the Python program and then shove the entire computer in the bag because the Raspberry Pi you have is 9 years old and can't run anything. Then you flip the emergency cutoff switch so that the solenoid and the servos have power, and then you hide the switch because you wouldn't want that to be easy to reach. And now finally you mount the turret and then adjust it so it has a good view of your surroundings so that it can do the social distancing work for you. The yellow light is an indicator for you to say, oop, didn't see you there, and the red light is a warning when people are too close. If they step back in a moment or two to a safe distance, the nerf dart won't fire, but if they stay in that red zone for long enough, it will. Now I just need to invite some friends over to test it. What do you mean you don't want to test my stuff anymore? The doctor said that was barely a second degree burn. Well, none of my friends want to come test it because uh, of the quarantine, uh, but luckily there's someone here who can uh, help me test it. Hey, uh, Bingo, do you want to come help me test something? Apparently Bingo's face is too horrifying for facial recognition, so I'm back to my personal favorite actor, Nicolas Cage. And as you can see, when I'm about six feet away, the yellow light turns on, giving a warning, and then the red light turns on, and a moment later the nerf dart fires. The GoPro mounts make it quick and easy to switch to a back-mounted system, which can protect you at places like the Superstore, when little snot-nosed Timmy decides to come wipe his nose all over your jacket, or whatever else little kids do. The yellow light means you're within, like, about six feet, and the red light means you're about five feet. And if you back up fast enough, it won't shoot you, but once you're, if you're in that five foot range for long enough, it'll shoot at you. Ah, oh. <laughs> so you got close to my eye. <laughs> right in the eye, man. Yeah, But then it'll, it'll also, it'll keep puffing air at them until you, they're further far enough away again. Because the other idea is that if you're at like, the grocery store or something, it'll watch your back for you. So if the little kid's like, running around behind you, trying to get close to you, wipe his nose on you at the store or whatever, it still tracks him. And if they get close enough, it'll fire. Ooh, that time went over me. <laughs> there you go. Up, up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there you go. Within that six feet, it'll shoot it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I know it was a shorter video, but I've built something like this before, so I'll link that video in the description if you want to see a little more about how I built this. But uh, otherwise, I just want to thank everyone that's doing such a great job in these hard times and just encourage everyone to just think and pray about those around them and see what they can do. Even if it's something small, like giving someone a call if they're especially isolated, I know it can mean a lot to them. So, uh. But yeah, now here I'll give you a quick preview of what I've been working on throughout the rest of this quarantine. Alright, the, the main thing I did was work on rocket design stuff and read up on a lot of things. I have a long way to go still, but uh, I was kind of using it to teach me some Python too. So like I made this uh, GUI, GUI, whatever it's called. And basically you enter in these values that uh, either these are either important to me or ones that I could find easily for my design. And it'll spit out stuff like uh, how to design the actual chamber and throat uh, parameters and then the kind of things that were the kind of values that I could expect out of the engine when it was running, like uh, mock at the exit, fuel tank, uh, flame temperature, uh, which all those are important for how fast the thing's going to melt and how fast, uh, if it'll actually work and make shock diamonds like I want it to. Uh, yeah, the chances of it blowing up are 100%. It's just a question of how long it takes to do that, and these calculations will help me 
walk the line between uh, making firecrackers and making uh, firecrackers that do something cool for like two seconds first. Uh, I've also just made some made a program that made some graphs, which I've never done that in Python either, so that was fun to learn. But uh, oop, they uh, these mostly help me figure out where my program has been going wrong, where my calculations have been going wrong. It looks these these graphs look fairly accurate for like a adiabatic flame temperature for like I think octane fuels. I looked up something just to make sure I was on the right track, and like it looked kind of right, but I'm not sure. So if you guys have any advice or any reading on that, you guys would suggest you could definitely drop that in the comments. I'd be appreciative of it. Um, I also I went ahead and designed some like preliminary rocket design like things too, like just rocket configurations. Uh, first one being cylindrical. It's just uh. Just a normal like uh, cylindrical combustion chamber with uh, leading to a small nozzle with a pretty small expansion area here too, because I can't run it at crazy high temperatures because I can't get an air supply at that high of a temperature unless I go to uh, welding a supply or something and get like a beefier tank charged or something. But uh, uh, so this is, yeah, this is the cylindrical design. It's made to just like get screwed down to its uh, its mount and then probably fired downward. Uh, yeah, and then these things, these things on the side, I wanted to reduce the amount of plastic I'm wasting here, but if if one stream of air comes through one of these basically weak points, what they are, even if even if they are saving weight, they're weak points. Points. Uh, if one stream of air finds its way through a crack in the the the, the layers, it's just gonna be hot enough that it melts all that plastic, widens the gap, and pretty much just blows the thing up pretty much instantly. So it might have to be solid and a lot thicker. Uh, our chances are so. Um, the other design, which is I hope I can give this one to work, because I think it's just hilarious. It's uh, I call it the artichoke. Uh, it's kind of still got the same re weight reduction stuff that might have to go, but uh, it's it's just goofy to me. Uh, for one, this this uh, this ridge down here might have to go too. But yeah, still same same parameters here, same fuel rate that I'm hoping to get out of this injector, and it's just it's still gonna blow up, but uh, hopefully it, it works. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching uh, and stay safe.